Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit weekend here aboard Athena. This weekend I'm going to take care of 99% of the prep work required to install the new hatches up on deck. That means a bit of sanding, some drilling, some fiddling around with taking the epoxy. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited, but uh, let's head up and get out of the rain. As most of you guys are aware, I've spent this summer replacing the entire deck here aboard Athena, meaning new core and new top skin. But I haven't had time to install the new hatches yet. However, my goal is to get that done before New Year's. But before we get started doing any actual work, let's just take a quick peek at the new hatches. Here are the three brand spanking new hatches I'll install up on deck. They're all manufactured by Vitas, and to be completely frank, I have absolutely no idea if these are any good. You might be wondering why the heck I'd want to go with hatches from Vitas when I have absolutely no experience with them. And the short answer to that question is simply cost. The Vitas hatches are about half the cost of Lumar hatches. A Lumar Ocean size 70 hatch is roughly 1,200 US dollars over here, whereas I paid exactly 652 US dollars for this Vitas 6363 hatch. Don't be confused by the different names, 70 versus 6363. Dimensionally, they are almost exactly the same. I believe the only real difference is the radius on the corners, and it's a tiny difference. That little detail is very important, or at least it was for my decision making, because that means at some point in the future, if I'm not satisfied with the hatches from Vitas, I can simply just swap them out for Lumar hatches without modifying the hatch openings. And considering that the Luma hatches are half the price, I figured, yeah, it would be worth the gamble. There is one thing I want to point out really quickly, and that's the fact that both the Ocean hatches from Lumar and the Magnus hatches from Vitas have the same CE certification, which is A1, meaning that they're designed for ocean use and that you can mount them, for instance, up on deck. When looking at these CE certifications for hatches, there's always a letter and a number. The letter indicates the use, for instance, A means the hatch is designed for ocean use, and then the number indicates a location aboard the boat. A quick little Google search later, here we've got a nifty little image that shows you the different CE areas. So the hatch I've got here, which is an A1 hatch, is meant for ocean use and can be mounted on the sides of the hull above the waterline. Of course, the fact that the Ocean Hatch from Lumar has the same CE rating as the Magnus Hatch from Vitas doesn't mean that those hatches are completely equal. It doesn't mean that the same service is going to be provided by the manufacturer. It doesn't mean the warranty is going to be the same or even the quality of the hatch as such. But like I said, considering the fact that the Vitas Hatch is half the price of the Lumar Hatch, eh, I, just, I think it's a gamble worth taking. Now, let's head in and take a look at the hatch openings. In here, in the forward cabin, there are, like I said, three hatch openings. There's one over here, there's another one in the forward head, and then there's the big one here above the V-berth. When I put on the new deck, I did also enlarge the opening for this hatch by about this much. I did that so that I can lower a washing machine down through here. The last time I mentioned that in a video, there were a couple of people that got their panties all up in a bunch down in the comment section, but uh, let's see what happens this time around. A few weeks back, I cleaned up the hatch openings by removing some excess fiberglass and sanding the sides of the hatch openings. So I think we're basically ready to start drilling some holes. It will be really nice to get the hatches in place and stop having to deal with these temporary boxes. It seems it has stopped raining for at least a few seconds, which is awesome because that gives me a chance to get some masking tape on here before the surface gets wet. With the masking tape on here, I'll have an easier time marking the locations of the holes to drill. And also, when I've drilled those holes and I want to fill them with thickened epoxy, I won't get thickened epoxy all over my nice paint job here, but then we'll get back to that epoxy a little later. Also, to make life a little easier on myself, I'm going to remove the top part of the hatch. That way, I only have the bottom frame here to juggle around up on deck. 
There are five nuts, but all of these are just there for shipping purposes. So those we can simply just go ahead and remove and discard. With those five out of the way, there's now these 10 smaller screws that are securing these plastic hinges to the aluminum frame. And these I do need to keep track of. I need to put these back in there. So it's best not to lose them. Now let's bring this up on deck and uh, mark some holes. Here is hoping this is still a good fit. Yep, that looks pretty good. Now the astute will have noted that I've put the location for the hinges on the forward part of this hatch, meaning of course that the hatch is gonna open facing aft. That is a whole nother can of worms that I think we're also gonna save for the next video because I think there's a bit of religion involved there and uh, I don't want World War III to break out down the comments. It is Christmas after all. While marking these holes, my accuracy is not terribly important as you will see in just a few minutes. I am going to start out by drilling a bunch of tiny little pilot holes. And again, that is all about making life easier for myself. Twenty-three little pilot holes later, I'm now going to swap out this tiny drill for a much bigger drill. A drill that's in fact a lot bigger than the hole I'll need in the end. Twenty-three much bigger holes thusly drilled. I'm sure most of you have guessed by now that I'm not going to be securing the hatches with wood screws or self-tapping screws. I'm going to be through bolting them. And I'm doing that because I think that's a much better solution. But I think a quick drawing would help explain that. This is supposed to be a cross section of one of the supporting frames for the hatches. So here we've got the core material, which is in this case plywood and mahogany. And then up here is the top skin and down there is the bottom skin. And as you can see, I've drilled a nice big hole through it. The next step is to fill this hole with thickened epoxy. And I really wish I had a different colored pen for this, but I don't. So we'll just have to make do. So these lines here indicate a hole filled with thickened epoxy. Then I'm going to drill a hole through that thickened epoxy like this leaving me with a hole through the sandwich construction that is completely sealed off from the core. Seen from the top, it's gonna look like this. There is a big blob of epoxy here with a hole in the middle of it. And that hole does not come in contact with the core in any way. What I've just shown you on that piece of paper is a very well-known method in the boating world. It has lots of different names. I'm going to use drill, fill, drill because that's a very good description of what's going on there. The end goal for this method, no matter the name, is to keep moisture out of the core of the sandwich construction. I should mention that there are a couple of different ways of doing this. If you're drilling in a foam core, you could do something like this, which is to drill a hole and then use a tool with a little 90 degree angle on it to scrape out some of the core, leaving you with something like this, which is a cavity inside of the sandwich construction that you could then fill before drilling your final hole. In my case, I don't have a foam core in the supporting frame for the hatch. It's a plywood and solid mahogany core, which digging out that cavity is not really a good option. So that's why I've opted to just drill a hole that I'm then going to fill with thickened epoxy. So the reason I'm not going to be using wood screws or self-tapping screws to secure the hatches has nothing to do with holding power because a regular old boring screw will hold a small elephant but I want to make sure that I don't get any moisture or water seeping into the core because I think one core replacement was plenty for me. I don't really feel the need to do another one. You might just have noticed that that last shot was a little bit darker and that's because I've spent a bit of time picking up the epoxy I keep up in my storage unit. I don't keep it here aboard the boat because I don't keep the boat heated during the week. And uh, it is starting to get dark so uh, let's hurry up. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of 406 
just a tiny little bit. I want this to be nice and runny. I've taped each of the holes so I'm not just pouring epoxy straight into the boat, so yeah, let's do it. Well, that was unfortunate. The wind picked up quite a lot while I was doing this and it's kind of like peeing into the wind. So I think I got a little bit of epoxy out here, but uh, that's okay. I can sand that and give it another coat of paint in the spring. As you can see, all the holes are now filled with epoxy. It's getting dark outside and I still have the other two hatch openings to deal with. I can't really film it when it's dark, so uh, I'm just going to take care of those off camera and I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning guys! It is December 24th. Merry Christmas! In a few hours, Jörg and I are going to head up to my parents' place where we're going to spend the night. But first, there are a few things I want to take care of here aboard Athena. Let's start by checking on the holes I filled with thickened epoxy yesterday. It looks like the thickened epoxy made it all the way through the hole, which is perfect. It's raining outside, so I can't really remove the cover, but it also feels like the top of the hole is nice and flush. So far, so good. I could just slap some primer on this to seal up the wood and call it done, but I think I want to take out some of the low spots up here. If you look here, you can see that there is quite a noticeable low spot, and then there's all the jankiness over here. Of course, all of this is going to get covered up by some trim, but if I spend a bit of time tidying this up, just a tiny bit, not to make it perfect, just to make it a little bit more smooth, for one, it would make me feel better, and also a smooth surface is a lot easier to clean compared to an uneven one. Living aboard Obelix in a cold climate for two and a half years has taught me that this is going to be a prime location for mold. It would be nice to be able to remove the trim and clean this area once in a while, just to keep things nice and clean. I've gone over the inside of the frame just to make absolutely sure that I've removed all of the high spots. That should make it a lot easier for me to fare this. And again, I'm not going for perfection. I'm just going for not as janky as this. Ta-da! I think we can all agree that that already looks a lot better. Tomorrow I can come back, sand this, and maybe apply another layer of fairing compound, and then we should be ready for primer. If you're wondering what's up with the tools here, they're just there to weigh down the box that's covering up the hatch opening. I'm going to take care of the other two hatch openings off camera, because I want to head up to my parents as soon as possible, and I do work a lot faster off camera. But uh, I'll see you guys bright and early. Well, maybe not bright and early, but sometime tomorrow. It's December 25th. It's pretty late in the afternoon, but Yukon and I had a wonderful evening at my parents' place. The first thing I noticed when I got back to the boat was the fact that the wind has shifted the boxes I've used to cover up the hatch openings. But, uh, come on in and uh, I'll show you. I doubt you'll be able to see it on video, but the box is shifted out towards the hull and there's a big gaping open hole right here. And the strings that I've used to weigh down the thing with are smushed into the fairing compound. Ah yes, Mother Nature. Always there to kick you in the nuts. But it's okay. I mean, like I said yesterday, I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going for slightly less janky. Keeping in mind that that is my level of ambition for this job, I see no reason why I should hand sand all of this when I could just cheat a little bit. In no way is this perfect, but I think just a touch more fairing compound and it's going to be sufficiently de-jankified. If I was going for perfection here, no doubt the most difficult part would be these inside corners here. 
but uh, yeah, I'm not. I think I'm just gonna settle for getting rid of low spots like the one right here and then cleaning this up a tiny bit more. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't really apply that last layer of fairing compound today because everything is kind of soaking wet. Of course, I could do the big hatch opening here. That's nice and dry, but yeah, it's easier just to do all of them at once. And I could easily do that tomorrow after work. Looking at the weather forecast, it looks like the wind is going to die down on Wednesday. And that still leaves me plenty of time to get three or four coats of primer on there and a few layers of top coat. So, fingers crossed, I should be able to mount the new hatches next weekend. Of course, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter if I manage to install the new hatches next weekend or just early next week. But uh, my goal is to get them on there before New Year's, so that is what I'm striving for. I'm going to pop back in there and take care of the rest of the sanding. But before I do that, I want to take just a few seconds to wish all of you guys a very Merry Christmas. I hope you all get to spend it with people you love. Typically, this time of year is a time for reflection. And I can honestly say that 2017 has been the best year in my life. And that is because of you guys and because of this YouTube channel. For instance, in 2017, I met my girlfriend through these videos. Thank you very much, Julian. And also the channel is steadily growing. And if it continues growing like it have been for the last couple of years, in another couple of years, I could make these videos my full-time job, which would be pretty awesome. So yeah, it's all very exciting. And that is because of you guys. And with that out of the way, I think that is gonna be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you. No, of course. Ah, uh, don't. Ah, the stupid wind keeps moving the boxes around. Arrgh.